We now live in a broken world, a world calling for healing. In responding to this, we can only begin from gratitude for life and the realization that, in our hearts, we do care. We can only act and have an impact if we work together. What we are fighting today is the inertia of the economy in paying sustainably for its extractive footprint. People must realize the impact of their consumption so that they demand a greater corporate accountability. From the climate negotiations to the indigenous leaders who are fighting for the love of their land, we can see that we do not lack human compassion and commitment, but we are unable to consolidate and sustain these actions in response to the cry of the land, the cry of the people. If we look at the world today, where we are really challenged in putting things together, is the economy and the environment. If we look at the origins of this and if we look at the reality, it's the same world. Uh, the oikos the, of economy and the oikos of ecology are the same household and we have to get a balance of them. Economics and ecology have gone different ways. This generation's challenge is a much more complicated crisis which is both social and environmental. The devastation brought by this ecological crisis is not only a tragic loss, it is also unjust. Our current economic systems are predatory and continues to fail, discarding our natural resources and excluding the many, especially the poor and the most vulnerable. We have the highest temperatures ever recorded. We have loss of species. We have infrastructure development that has nothing to do with human development but with financial gain. We have pushed the planet to its limits and breached its natural boundaries. We are at the socio-political tipping point. Are we going to withdraw from this challenge? Can we collaborate with the youth in committed leadership for change? It is a challenge of humanity and to humanity, to care, to reconcile, and to do justice. Many groups and individuals have come together to respond and help heal this broken world by calling for action and reconciliation with God, with neighbor, and with creation, challenging its worldwide ministries. One of these groups is eco Jesuit. Eco Jesuit is a way to link with the Jesuit family of institutions and people around the world who uh, care about creation, care about our common home, and want to act together. It deals primarily with uh, communication, raising awareness, mobilizing uh, people, particularly youth, involving uh, in dialogue decision makers in order to promote sustainable development. So how do we get the balance into this? How do we get a good economy that is actually responding to people's needs and not driving consumption? This is where networking is playing a new role, media and communications, trying to get a coherent message across of in a sense, what is the common good? And that common good includes all life. So the effort is to see, okay, what's going on in our research institutions, what's going on in parishes, in environmental education programs, uh, how are people in rural areas that are the most affected uh, really coming together and giving a clear message. And increasingly we need to give the platform to these voices in the margins. So that's what Eco-Jesuit is trying to put together. Yeah? 
uh, where is the action already and trying to build with that action. I feel ecology is everything that we think, feel and do. I think about relationship. It is an inevitable, intricate, interdependent, interrelatedness or interconnectedness that we share. Eco-Jesuit is really trying to build on different existing efforts of Jesuits and partners and we are trying to leverage on these strengths, trying to connect the different works because well number one we have the ecological crisis that does require a huge collaboration and number two we're really just better off when we work together because we, we fill in gaps, we fill in weaknesses. What we've been focusing on recently is really building regional teams. The goal of Eco Jesuit is to facilitate dialogue and engagements to reconcile with God, with one another, and with creation, addressing the broad call for action of Laudato Si and the urgency of a just global transformation in care for the earth and the most vulnerable. Eco-Jesuit's strategic objectives are to promote global cooperation by engaging in dialogues to discern with the scientific community and with belief systems on the role of values and civil society in achieving effective change. Accompany regional actions by collaborating to encourage links with regional networks and with diverse stakeholders. And support local initiatives by networking to strengthen local efforts in ecological conversion and meeting the needs of people. Continuously giving depth to these is the Universal Apostolic Preferences, which unites Jesuits in its mission. And if you are walking with the migraine workers or those who are not dignity, then we will also recognize why they are migrant because of the ecological disasters as well. Therefore, these, all these are interconnected. Therefore, what we are saying is that universal preferences are not simply action program in the limited sense, but these are perspectives that should change our mindset. There are a lot of localized activities that are going on, really trying to build awareness and engagement. But part of the process also is to connect and to communicate. So at various times, where the different groups uh, across the six conferences or continents as we uh, organize will join, for example, the climate strike. So we've got to get that, that practical action together. We're also, as very small participants, we engage in the sustainable development goals, reporting, strategies, workshops. Indigenous peoples play a key role in us relearning as an integrated society how to operate. See, the difficulty is, is we've divided up the problems in the world, as it were, as if they're not connected. But indigenous people live in the same land, have the same exchange. And whether the problem is economic, political, environmental, basic water, health, all of these problems, they live these through each day in a way, in a city, people do not. But that can be highly destructive in terms of where people are placed. So we bring that message to SDGs, we try to bring it to the World Forum, and a lot of the effort has been focused around disaster risk reduction. Because people in the margins, the most vulnerable people, suffer most during these events, and will suffer most in the climate shifts that we are experiencing. With its global reach, Eco Jesuit also encourages participation and communication beyond the Jesuits and promotes a global collaboration and networking on ecology. 
we actually collaborate a lot outside of the Jesuit network. So, for example, with um, one of the universities in Melbourne, we're collaborating with them and um, we've set up this symposium whereby we brought together um, uh, unions, uh, government at different levels, um, and in Northern Territory, right up in Darwin, where we work too, we partnered with a couple of other organisations and uh, Aboriginal community controlled organisations uh, were part of um, the whole forum. So it was getting people across different levels of government to come together to partner. So probably for us, our day-to-day -day work takes us uh, a lot into that cross-sector, sectoral um, involvement. The whole intent of this conference is to promote collaboration and networking first within the conference and then hopefully we can collaborate with others and network with other conferences and even beyond the Society of Jesus. Uh, so we have a wide range of, of networking uh, that we try to promote so that we can be more effective in our desire to respond to the burning issues of our time. Our strength is youth. So talking about the strength of Tarumitra, we have more than 3 lakh student volunteers all over the country. We give a lot of importance to Mother Earth, our biodiversity, spreading a lot about uh, ecological sensitiv sensitivity, uh, promoting a lot of uh, eco-spirituality among the youth, among the students, so that they can take the responsibility of not only a greener Mother Earth, but they can safeguard and protect the present and can be the real torch bearers and the role models for the upcoming generation who are looking up to them. Impacts of climate change and environmental degradation are also linked with migration, an issue the conferences have also been working on together. We plan together about the common issue that we need to, to, to address. So we focus on how to advocate the global compact on migration. So this is the international global compact that protect the migration. Migration can include oh, migrant workers, can include also refugees, asylum seekers. Internationally, we also have a network like a network in extractive mining, network on ecology and network on migration as well. So we try to connect each other so that we, we are not working in isolated way. By doing together, we, we are strong. You know, in this effort to collaborate, we learn and we try to, to be as uh, listening as possible with regard to people who are of different faiths. There is a big shift from we have collaborators to we are collaborators. Some of their programs also include Eco Jesuit Online, a free subscription-based online publication that features commentaries, reflections and insights, analysis and exchange of ideas and practices on various ecological and social concerns. Flights for Forests, a voluntary carbon accountability scheme that seeks to generate commitment amongst Jesuit individuals and institutions globally by contributing for every flight taken. They also provide a platform for discussions on the initiative centered on the five themes of Eco-Jesuit. The initiatives also outline steps for responding to disasters based around five phases with the ultimate goal of building back better. Another project is the EcoStream, an online resource and reference system for sharing ongoing initiatives on ecology and sustainability. Lastly, the Living Laudato Si Spirituality for Action Workshops that intend to contribute to the formation of apostolic communities of practices capable of reconciling with creation. 
Eco Jeshwat also supports the following programs. Healing Earth Text, a free access online textbook in environmental science, ethics, spirituality, and action recognized by the Vatican. The Ignatian Carbon Challenge that invites individuals and institutions to address climate change and environmental justice through a series of monthly challenges. And the worldwide movement of divestment from fossil fuels and switching to renewable energy sources. So these crisscross and they connect. What we really have to be sure of is that we're getting stories of, of action from below seeking the consolidation uh, of the message, the coherence, so that people really find this worthwhile in terms of listening, in terms of finding their own point of action, and finding the hope that we need in terms of moving forward. No matter how hard the world's challenges are, we continue and find strength in our community, guided by Laudato Si. We are thus called on to accompany communities of justice and practice in sharing a moral compass and engendering greater hope. Now the youth play a particularly important role in this and they, they're not going to play that role tomorrow, they actually play that role today. And they are the ones who have to take a hold, have a voice, and communicate how we've got to get an act together that is much more sustainable. I think that we, as part of the Jesuit network, really need to ask ourselves, then, where are we? Where are we? Because this is the issue of our time, and I think we need to really examine our own hearts and minds about our own contribution to trying to create a more hopeful future for young people but for everyone. Uh, the youth certainly have a big role to play. Um, the youth are into digital culture. The youth are the, the main proponents of this climate justice issue. It's not true that the, the youth are the future of the planet. Uh, they, they are already there. So with these energies coming together, we are seeing the possibility of a tipping point on a global scale that really does give us the hope for uh, a sustainable and a peaceful world.